Hi, I'm Stephanie Hoffman, and today I'm in Columbus, Ohio at Path Robotics, where I'm going to be learning about the cutting edge technology in welding robotics. I'm Stephanie Hoffman, and I've been in the welding industry for more than 20 years, working as a welder, fabricator, instructor, and now with the American Welding Society. Where I get to travel the country meeting people who are building incredible things while introducing the next generation to careers in welding and metal fabrication. I'm here with Joe. Joe is the Senior VP of Path Robotics. So Joe, tell me a little bit about what Path Robotics is. Path Robotics is a solution to the weld labor that people can't find. Okay. We are the only solution out there that takes programming out of robotic welding automation. That's amazing. So people are able to do robotic style welding without the programming now is what you're saying. That's exactly right. Because <laughs> That's pretty incredible. So you're saying now you just take whatever the part is and this robot is going to be able to figure out where to weld and how to weld it? Yes. Uh, it, it, <laughs> it, like, in short, this doesn't even make any sense to me. <laughs> well, it doesn't make sense to a lot of people and quite frankly a line that we use here is our biggest competitor is disbelief. Yeah. And that's why we have this facility and we bring folks here to show them. Now, we can't do any every part out there. I mean, we can't take a battleship, if you will, and run yeah. it through this thing. There are yeah. some things we so can't do. So small parts. But, but in our, we have two formats of cells in, our, in the original embodiment, of the, in the original type cell. It's about a cubic meter, so about three feet by three feet by three feet. If it fits in that volume envelope, it fits in our cell. And our global scanners could see it. It's a big 3D scanner. Yeah. And then from there, our local scanner goes and takes a deeper look at it. Our whole tech stack, the artificial intelligence, all the programming that's embedded in this thing, programs that perfect math equation, that perfect that's path incredible. to lay down that weld in the flat, the, the 1F, 2F position wow. when at all possible. This is like mind blowing because you know, I've gone to things like, you know, Fabtech and all these trade shows, right? Where you see these robotic cells, yes. but it requires very, very skilled engineers to figure out how it's going to complete that weld knit that it's trying to weld. Exactly. So are we going to be able to walk around and see all this stuff in action from like the ground floor to, to what they're actually making for people and companies? Absolutely be happy to show you. We talked earlier about us being the weld engineers that, that you don't need. Mm -hmm. Well, those weld engineers work in this lab and they do all sorts of research such as this. Oh, wow. It may not look very exciting, but what we're doing here is understanding parameters. Okay. We're understanding parameters of base material, filler wire, gas, things of that nature. And all of that information isn't just about creating a, a cool looking piece of metal, uh -huh. it's about teaching the machine what works and what doesn't. So like creating this type of stuff. So laying a perfect weld down on, on this type of stuff. This God, is one of our sample parts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not as light as it looks. Yeah, we'll get our workout in by picking up a lot of these parts, no doubt. No doubt. So why do we have this as an example and something we're working on? Because geometry such as this is oftentimes very hard right. to do in traditional welding automation. Right. For yeah. us, we're scanning this thing, we're understanding it, and mathematically solving a very big equation yeah, this, to lay down that perfect weld. That doesn't have the traditional very straight-lined weld mints that you see most robotic welders doing. Exactly. Touch points and things of that, yeah. touch sensing and things yeah. of that nature. You touch here, you touch there, you touch there, you draw a straight line. Yeah. No. This thing, every, if you could imagine, every millimeter, every tiny millimeter along that path, yeah. we're completely making changes and adjustments as we go through all of them. So what are we gonna go look 
got next? Well, before we go there, I'm, I'm going to take a peek at this. I mean, you know, we talked about research, and th this is really hard to, to see, but you can see there's a fat gap down here, if you will, and a skinny one there. Yeah. And this, this is a representation of, like a CJP, a complete joint penetration weld. And as you know, the root pass is so very important because yeah. then you put the caps on top of it and multi-pass build it out. Well, it's really, it's really hard to see perhaps, but yeah. you can see the gap is wide, wide here, it's skinny here, and right. yet look at the roof of that weld. Yeah, completely Perfectly flat. Perfectly flat. Why? Because we're seeing that, again, every millimeter, and adjusting to it. So we're giving it the speeds and the feeds that it needs to lay down that perfectly flat weld regardless of Very that cool. gap. That's, that's pretty amazing. Look at that. Completely smooth. I don't think I can pay anybody to do something that good, so. <laughs> So now we're at a different location. We are at the Path Robotics Manufacturing Facility, and I'm with Paul, and Paul is the Director of Applications Engineering. That is correct. That's a mouthful. It is so, a long title. <laughs> so Paul, I've been hearing a lot about these cells, so it's really awesome to get to see this now, finally, and it's kind of like whole glory here. So tell me a little bit about each of these components. The only thing I really noticed right off the top is that there's a, a positioner for our weld mints here, and then the sure. welder itself, but sure. everything else, I have no idea what's going on. The other pieces of parts of this, so we have a positioner, as you mentioned, okay. on these AW2s. We have uh, two different modalities to them, so okay. we have a tilt turn positioner. What that means is we're going to rotate the part this way. We'll also tilt and turn it like this. So that gives us really good flexibility to be able to present it to the cameras. Okay. It also gives us flexibility to keep the, the part in a constant weld position. So all of our path planning is with respect to keeping joints in a nice constant weld position, whether it's flat, horizontal, vertical. Okay, so they can do all positions, not just flat. Correct. Correct. Awesome. Okay, good to know. So we also have the articulated arm back here. So we um, we have black robotic arms. Okay. Uh, we paint them black because uh, because we think it's cool. Okay. It looks pretty slick. <laughs> it looks very sleek. Uh, we also have a local scanner that's mounted to the tool flange on the robot. So as this robot moves around in space, uh, we have another sensing system that is uh, giving us any kind of fine adjustments on the topography of the part that we're gonna weld out. So what's the differences between the system on there and then the ones that are actually mounted to the actual welder? So what we're doing on the global side is we're looking for that part in space and trying okay. to register it back to the robot. On the local side, our sensors are looking for any kind of fine um, variations in the joint. So if there's gaps on there, if there's little, uh, little movements in the joint, we're sensing that and adjusting to it. So is this like program that if you were making 3,000 of these parts right here and you put it in there every time, will it always constantly rescan and recalibrate or is it is it just one time it sets for that part and yep. then it'll just run? So it always does. So we're always scanning the part because we're looking for variations in the joint. And that's okay. really the key with okay. this local scanner is we're looking for any kind of any kind of variation, whether mm -hmm. it's the joint line moving around, whether there's gaps in the joint, uh, we're trying to characterize it so that right. we can adjust to it, just like a manual welder would. Wow, that's pretty. That's super unique. That's awesome. So what we're doing right now is we're basically scanning the part. Okay. So we're going to roll through each of these sensors. It's projecting light onto the part. We're reading how that light deforms on the part and uh -huh. getting the topography back out. We stitch all that together, and then at the end of that, we basically have a full topography of the part that you put in. The Is cell. it like taking pictures or something? Because it's like it's like a wicked flash that's coming. It's out taking of there. lots of pictures at a very high rate. Yeah, so right now what's happened is we've gotten this topography of the part. Mm -hmm. We're feeding that back in. We compare it to our CAD model, mm -hmm. register them together, and we do a check to say, okay, 
is the part that was supposed to get put in here the part that actually got put in here right get a thumbs up on that um, and then we can go gotcha so the next step in the process for us is we do something we call pre-scan okay so we'll use the robot will come down scan all the way around um, seam to seam in this case we just have one seam on okay. this on this part and then we'll turn it, it on for welding so the doors are closing on here robots coming down now okay <clears throat> and so this is a process we call pre-scan so we're basically running around each seam getting okay. any kind of fine adjustments um, any kind of special characteristics of that joint we're going to measure that here feed that back into our process um, and then weld everything out. So it is tacked up right now. So somebody has to do that in-house and yep. then put it in there. Kind of <clears throat> yeah, so, so partially the, assembled. Correct. So the workflow that we use is that everything coming into the cell is, is tacked. So we okay. do a fit up and tack process coming into the cell. Okay. All right, All right. so it's pre-scanned everything out now. Um, just gonna start welding. So the cool thing about this part is it has all kinds of curves on it. So if you're gonna program this out robotically, you've gotta put all kinds of points in there to go around each of those curves. Right. In our case, we're just letting it fly. So our autonomous path planning just takes over from there. Uh, another cool aspect about this is on a part like this, you're gonna put a handful of points, right, for each of these curves. For us, we space points around a millimeter. So there's all kinds yeah. of points. So any kind of fine adjustment tight, that right? we need, it tightens up right into that root. That's nice. really awesome. Yeah, because typically with robotic systems that I've seen, it's all just very basic straight line style right. welding. So you're going to teach two points for a line, and you're interpolating right. through that. So we have a bunch of little tiny little segments tiny. that we go through. So the other thing about this is, Work angle, travel angle, travel speed, tip to work, those are all just numbers that we put in. Mm -hmm. So in traditional robotics, you're driving that robot down, you're getting oh, yeah, your gauges yeah. out, you get your protractor out, measuring angles. Yeah. We don't do that. We yeah. just say, I want, I want a 45 for. work, I want a five degree push. And it just goes it and does that. it. With traditional robotics on teach pendant, not the easiest thing to do. It right. takes a long time. For us, it just flows out naturally out of our algorithm. Wow. Yeah, so really what we're trying to drive towards is we're just trying to remove barriers for mm -hmm. people to get into, into robotics and to take advantage of it so you get welds that look as crisp yeah. as this. Well, Joe, thank you so much for having me here today at Path Robotics. It was really amazing seeing what you guys have done in three short years when it comes to revolutionizing the robotic welding technology in this industry. So thank you so much. It's our pleasure. Thanks. Thank you for being here. We'll see you next time on Metal America.